Yeah, let's just get straight to it. Um, this is big shit. I hope you prepared like I'm prepared. If not, stop the video, pause the video, go back and do what you gotta do. And get prepared, nigga. I got all my, my, my shit. I'm cracking. Um, so go do what you gotta do. This is some real shit. You can probably see by the title. This is not a game. I'm not trying to convert nobody or do any of that shit, but I do like to understand what the fuck I'm dealing with. It's about knowing, and I like to know. So let's get this first cracking. The Influences of Lucifer and Arlon by Rudolf Steiner. Human Responsibility for the Earth by Rudolf Steiner, right? A little thin book. Should be a quick read. But you kind of have to know some things. So, Armand, I went back to this book. And it's dope because I already had this book. That's why, you know what I'm saying? You get books, whatever you're drawn to. And you never know when they come into play, this, that, and the third, whatever. But me, I'm usually in and out of books and whatever else. So, there's a lot of books I've been in and out of that I have not read the entire book because I'm in and out of it. I'm on a certain path. I want to know certain shit. So, I'll be in and out of books. So, this shit is dope, and I'm going to show you exactly my process of, of how I came to uh, truly understanding this book as well. Um, but even just one of the things, you know, behind the scenes. So, matter of fact, let's go into that first. Lucifer and Armand. One of the things that uh, you have to first understand is who the fuck Armand is. And Lucifer, everything that usually goes with Lucifer gets lumped up into Satan, the devil, all of that shit. It's like Lucifer is all of that shit. So you would think. And that's what the normal narrative is, which is also why we come to this book. Now, knowing what we know about books, right, you go to the back of the book, and I'm going to the index. Now, Lucifer is first. One of the main things I notice when I go to the index... This is a book about the devil, right? Perceptions of evil. And I have talked about this book before, but make so make no mistake about it. But um, even, like, check this out on the back of the little uh, cover, right? But on the back of the cover, it even says this. The book, in addition, is a useful compendium of names, Deeds, beliefs, holidays, and paraphernalia associated with medieval witchcraft. And it contains appendixes including two original Latin versions of the Canon Episcopae and a bibliography of theorists of witchcraft from 1430 to 1486. So, point is, it is a compendium, which, who knows what the fuck, it's a compendium. <laughs> A useful compendium of names, deeds, beliefs, holidays, blah, blah, blah. You can find a bunch of niggas in this one book if you want to know who this is or who that is. Like um, one of these tabs I got. Check this out. The Etruscan, 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 whatever you want to call it. I believe them are the niggas that were there before the Greeks. And the Greeks got them niggas. And then Rome got the Greeks. So whatever the fuck. But for the Etruscans, right? Um, Charun or Karun, Karen, but C H A R U N, also spelled K A R U N or Karen, is the Etruscan god of death. And what reminded me, um, I have this Gonzo, I put Gonzo on there, but the Etruscan god of death, right? Gonzo, if you know who Gonzo is, is one of like the Muppet babies. But check this out, check this out. And. He has a huge mallet. So like the original Mario game, he ran around with a big ass mallet. Wop, 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 right? The mallet striking shit. Anyways, but a big mallet, like big hammer. Thor. Anyways, Charon, Karen, has a huge hooked nose, similar to a bird's beak. Huge hooked nose. Has a shaggy beard and hair with long pointed bestial ears, grinding teeth, and grimacing lips. His color is often dark blue. Little baby Gonzo, right? Sometimes he is shown with wings or with serpents growing from his body. All these characteristics are found in medieval and modern figures of the devil. Karen commonly carried a huge mallet with which he struck the head of a person about to die. 
The implement is more to be identified with the scythe put into the hand of death by Christian iconographers. Iconographers than with any attribute of the devil. Although Karen's mallet is sometimes replaced by a hook which could have been influenced which could have influenced the devil's trident, pitchfork, or cruel. Whatever the fuck a cruel is. K R E U E L. I don't know. Whatever the fuck. But anyways, boom, there you go. That was just one of the things that I had clicked on. I mean that I had had had, you know what I'm saying took a note of how it clicked on. <laughs> Told you nigga I've been drinking. But that was one of the things that I took a note of in the motherfucking book. Um that deserved to get a tab. Another thing. So I guess I'm just saying, man, I'm just saying, man. Point is you can find a lot of different people, a lot of different things. Um I was reaching recently watching Black Adam, here's another little whatever. But I was watching Black Adam and I did a little research on the whole figure of Black Adam and they talked about Anpu. So, of course, you come in here and Anpu is, in fact, in here. Anpu is another name for Anubis. But, again, let's stay on track. We don't get into all that. Point is, when I come back here to the index, right, we got a book. We go to the index. I'm looking for Lucifer. So, all references to Lucifer, I have one, two, three, four. Four references to Lucifer. But when I come over here to Araman, there is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve references to Araman. So it's like, who, who is this nigga? How, why is he, you know, that, that's just kind of what struck me. But when we want to know, you got to go to different books. You got to do your research, right? So we did our research and yeah. So basically... And again, this is not to convert no nigga or none of that. You know what I'm saying? We just, this is for review and research purposes. You know what I mean? We're doing our due diligence. So, Lucifer is first mentioned 195 to 197. So, let's go to 195 to 197. The combination of the motifs of rebellion, rebellion and lust melded two originally discrete sins, two originally different motives for sin on part of the angels. In yet another way, the idea of a prideful fall was added to the concept of a devil. The idea of a prideful fall was added to the concept of a devil. In the book of Isaiah, it is written, How you have fallen from heaven, bright morning star, fell to the earth, sprawling helpless across the nations. You thought in your own mind, I will scale the heavens. I will set my throne high above the star of God. I will sit on the mountain where the gods meet in the far recesses of the north. I will rise high above the cloud banks and make myself like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the depths of the abyss. This bright morning star, more or perhaps more literally translated from the Hebrew Bright sun of the morning. Bright sun of the morning. So you see how while we on our rooster shit. While we got our big, big, big nigga, big voice out there, man. We got to put this out there on the internet. And this is a lot of energy. So again, man, I apologize if any fuck shit happened to anybody in their life. That was not the intent. But again, I'm prepared. I knew what the fuck I was doing getting ready to make this video. And share this shit with you niggas. So I hope y'all know what y'all doing. But anywho, anywho, anywho. I digress. Point is, this bright morning star, or perhaps more literally translated from the Hebrew, Helel ben Shahar, bright sun of the morning, has often been considered a reference to a king of Babylon or Assyria, metaphorically likened, metaphorically likened to the morning star whose brightness is erased by the rising of the sun. Now, the point of that is this down here. A fundamental inconsistency of these myths is the chronology of the fall. The watcher angels, with all that sin, you know, lust and whatnot, fell after Adam and Eve had already left Eden and produced many generations of children. So see, what 
Rudolf Steiner posits what Rudolf Steiner the the stance that he takes as far as Lucifer and Armon, the influences of Lucifer and Armon, not Lucifer versus Armon, Lucifer and excuse me, both them niggas. So what struck me was like how in the movies and shit back in the not the movies in them old school cartoons. They would put a little angel on one shoulder and a little devil on one shoulder. But both of these motherfuckers would be Yosemite Sam. And the good Yosemite Sam is saying, oh, man, don't shoot him. You know, have show mercy. And the devil Yosemite Sam is like, bang, bang, motherfucker. Pow, pow, pow. Do that shit. Do that shit. Do that shit. Lucifer and Armon. One of these niggas is extreme good. So, which I'm about to show you and what dude states. I'm going to read to you out of both of these books. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. You'll see out of both of these books. Which is the point to really understand what the fuck we coming about. I got another little bonus book that literally was just delivered yesterday. It's thick as fuck. And I ain't been in it yet. Turn this bitch around. And I've only, I opened it up to see what it will see. Like I said, most of the time when I get a good book or I'll give me a book, I'm like, what, what you got for me? I believe it was like 320 something. Let me make sure. But I'd be like, what you got for me? And I just flip this bitch open and start reading. And as you can see, I already highlighted some shit. So it was like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. So, uh, but I got another book. My bad. Let me show that shit to you. Amazon. I got the paperback. Probably should have got the uh, motherfucking hardcover. If ever you can, get the hardcover. You got a couple extra dollars, man. Get the hardcover. But me, I got so many books. And I'm just so interested in getting books in and whatever else. Mars and Gemini. Um, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's cheap. Whatever's gonna be here faster as well. Let's get it. But Lords of the Left Hand Path. My bad. Too much light. Lords of the Left Hand Path. Forbidden practices and spiritual heresies. From the cult of Set to the cult of Satan. By Stephen E. Flowers. Now, a lot of shit gets a lot of bad rep. Matter of fact, let me read this to you too, because it does pertain to what we're talking about. Even again. The influences of Lucifer and Armand. Check this out. Check this out. From the back cover, Lords of the Left Hand Path on Amazon. Back cover. Um, the author, Flowers, explains that while the right hand path seeks union with and thus dependence on God, the left hand path seeks a higher law based on knowledge and power. It is the way of self-empowerment and true freedom. Beginning with the ancient Hindu and Buddhist sects and moving westward, he examines many alleged left-hand path groups, including the cult of Set, the Assassins, the Neoplatonists, the Hellfire Club, the occult Nazis, several heretical Sufi, Zoroastrian, even Christian and Muslim sects. Sect with a T, not sex with an S. You know what I'm talking about? Sext. But anywho, you get my point. Um, point being, yeah, man, you got to, when you really start to understand what the fuck is going on, what we talking about, it's about getting your mind right and understand, it's just, a, it's about knowing the way of the world. It's about knowing. So, man, let's get back to the books, right? All right. But check it out. Check it out. Check it out. All right. Because you wanted to talk about, okay, right, right, right. Who Lucifer is. And why is the term Lucifer, not Satan in our mind, Lucifer in our mind? So we're going to get to that. But let's, let, let's expose it. Let's go and get in it, right? All right. So the Watcher Angels fell. The Watcher Angels fell after Adam and Eve had already left Eden and produced many generations of children. The sin of the Watchers being placed in the time of Noah. The Watchers seduce the daughters of men, and they also teach mankind useful knowledge. But mankind's acquisition of this knowledge is displeasing to the Lord. Nigga didn't like that. But mankind's acquisition of this knowledge is displeasing to the Lord. The myths of the fall of Adam and Eve and of that of mankind at the time of the Watchers can, from the structural point of view, be considered the same myth with the meaning... Same myth with the meaning that humanity acquired knowledge that the Lord wished to hide from them. You cannot eat from the tree of life or the tree of you, whatever the fuck. Same shit. Didn't want nigga to eat the apple. Didn't, you can't eat from these trees. You know what I'm talking about? Again, I've been drinking. I've been smoking. And it's cracking. 
So, you can't eat from these trees. You know what I mean? And then here's the same type of myth. You know what I'm saying? There's acquired knowledge that the Lord wished to hide from them. The myth is topologically similar to that of the Titans in Greece. The Titans again. So here we go again. For Adam and Eve were tempted by an evil angel, Satan. And if logic and chronology were followed, if logic, this shit's supposed to make sense, and chronology, the timeline, is followed. If the shit's supposed to make sense, and the timeline is followed, not just show blind faith, not just how the fuck you feel, not just what you've been told and what you heard. The shit's supposed to make sense from the data collected. Anywho. Okay, let me catch up. If logic and chronology were followed, this temptation would be impossible since the angels had not yet fallen. Adam and Eve were tempted by an evil angel. Satan. Couldn't have been that nigga. Well, Satan gets lumped up into Lucifer. Again, all that shit kind of gets lumped into Lucifer. Couldn't have been him because Satan doesn't get mentioned until motherfucking Noah. So who the fuck are we talking about? What the fuck are we talking about here? It's just something different. But it ain't that. Alright? Anyways. The effects of modern scholars to build in a consistency by speaking of a distinction between the Watchers and Satan has led to an artificial separation of the two. Satan and the other evil angels are essentially the same. The Christians will resolve the ambivalence by gradually forgetting the story of the Watchers all together, just forgetting the story of the Watchers all together. I mean, again, I've been in church for a long time. They don't, they don't talk about that shit. I was there until I was like 18, man. I went off to college, yeah, but, uh, you know, mom had us in church every Sunday. Nigga, they don't talk about that shit. Now, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been in Sunday school. Maybe they hit you with that shit in Sunday school. When the last time they talked about this shit in sermon or something? Just saying, OZ the Wizard. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Don't do none of that shit. Keep running and hiding, nigga. I got a view. It don't matter. Somebody's watching this shit. We good. <laughs> but anyways, by gradually forgetting the story of the Watchers all together and emphasizing the fall of Satan through his envy of the Lord before the creation of Adam. Such refinements are not necessary to understand the myth, which, like most myths, should not be expected to be logically or seriously consistent. Another apparent inconsistency is that evil spirits are sometimes perceived as the ruined angels themselves, sometimes as the giants whom their intercourse with the daughters of men produced, and sometimes as the ghost of those giants who were slain by the avenging angels. Again, if understood as myth, the story is comprehensible without being consistent. If it's just a myth, if it's just a story, if this shit ain't real, then yeah, sure, you can understand it like that. It's just the moral love, you know what I mean? It's just what they're trying to convert, convey, you know what I'm saying? What they want to to tell you through story. It's just an allegory. It's not supposed to be fucking real. It's like goddamn Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. It ain't real. It's a myth. Anyways, anyways, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If understood as myth, the story is comprehensible. It's, it's easy to understand. I can comprehend that without it being consistent. But the shit don't add up. But it ain't gotta add up. It's just a story. So tell your little fucking story and I'll go ahead. To sum up, the Ben... The Bene, Bene Ba Elohim, the Bene Ha Elohim, Bene Ha Elohim are the heavenly court or the pantheon of the Lord, but some of them sin through lust or pride. If through pride they are cast down from heaven, if through lust they descend voluntarily, but are then cast down into the pit as punishment for their sins. They are imprisoned in the darkness, either in earth or in the air. They are they not only sin themselves but also tempt humanity to sin. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I went too far. My bad, my bad. Four ideas which used to be separate are now united. I went too far, my bad. But this is with the whole watchers myth, right? The imagery begins to overlap. 
imagery begins to overlap. So, four ideas are now united, which one separate, four ideas, one separate, are now united. One, the sin of the devil is pride. Two, the ruin of the watchers through lust. Three, the fall of the heavenly court from heaven. And four, the descent of the watchers for the purposes of sin. The falling star or fading star equated now with Satan gives a new name, Lucifer, to the devil and substantially enriches the myth. In the New Testament, Luke chapter 10 verse 18, Satan falls from heaven like lightning. Luke seems to have united the idea of the fallen angels with Lucifer and so thus identifies Satan, chief of the ruined angels, with the fallen one cast down from heaven. And that's where it goes in to thumb up, da -da 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 right, the rest of this shit. So that's how it just kind of lumps everything. They, they give all of this shit to Lucifer. Which is now all of a sudden Satan or the devil. Like I was trying to say, you know, the devil is like a title. You be a devil, like the devil. But now all of a sudden this nigga got a name, Lucifer, and it's Satan. So that's 195 through 197. And that's where you actually see it mentions Lucifer over here. It mentions Lucifer with the Watchers and whatnot. <clears throat> and it gives you books that you can go and, and, and get a little deeper into that. So the next one was, I believe, we go back here to the index. Again, yeah, man, get your, get your drink and do whatever you got to do, man. Pause this shit. We're going to go through this shit. We're going to talk about it. So, let's go back to the L. Lucifer. 207-208. And I promise you, you know, we, we, we got, we, we, we rocking. We got some, we got some shit here. So, from 207 to 208. In the book of Adam and Eve, Satan, or the devil, successfully tempts Adam and Eve to fall, appearing to Eve in the shape of a beautiful angel. Number 57. When Satan has successfully tempted her, Eve cries out and says, Woe unto thee, thou devil! Why dost thou attack us for no cause? Why dost thou harry us, thou enemy, persecute us to the death in wickedness and envy? This, the displacement of evil... From Yahweh to the devil is clear. No longer does Abraham or Job seek to understand the inscrutable will of the God. Now it is the devil whom one must ask why there is evil in the world. See that? How it takes it away from God. Like if God is all things and everything. The creator of all that is. And ever will be. And ever was. If it's everything, then whatever you niggas claim to be evil or bad, negative polarity shit, the negative shit, he created that too. So you cannot get away from the fact that this nigga, whatever all of creation is, created both good and evil. If you want to give shit terms of good and evil within the God of everything, the mother of all that is, the creator of it, whatever, you want to call it whatever term, title, whatever human shit you want to name it, made this shit too. And one of the central themes is why would a motherfucker give in kind of this book, why would he give all of this power and all of like at some point, all of a sudden, the devil becomes synonymous with God. Like this nigga has God-like powers and commands legions of angels, just like God, the Lord, commands legions of angels. How did, you know, it, it, what? But again, that was these motherfuckers attempt to make a extreme good and an extreme bad and what happens is boom now you got these motherfuckers who are perplexed the normal human who, who's now confused and shit all the time because you have an extreme good an angel an angel on one shoulder and you have an extreme bad a devil on the other shoulder and the goal is to walk the middle path which is where the christ energy comes from but we'll talk about that again we'll get to it if we can get to it but the books of Adam and Eve, conjoined with the Apocalypse of Moses, exist in a Latin and a Slavonic version. They were written before 70 A.D. by a Jewish author. Though there were some later Christian interpolations, the devil's ability to take the form of a beautiful angel was explained by later theologians in terms of his angelic nature. Angels have no bodies or spiritual 
bodies merely so that in order to communicate with human beings they assume a form of their choice they are able to change their apparent forms and say satan and the evil angels use this ability in order to deceive taking a handsome form or a humble one or whatever they please historically speaking the devil's assumption of the shining form is probably in part due to the assimilation assimilation you see what I'm saying? They created this nigga. The assimilation of the figures of Lucifer and Satan. Now, all of a sudden, all, Lucifer and Satan are the devil. They keep putting all of this shit into one motherfucker to where it's so confusing. You don't know who's who. And that's why we had to really, like, understand, get to all of this shit and go through 20 minutes of this shit so we can understand who's who. That's a big part of this shit of what I'm trying to even show y'all, right? Who's who? Who the fuck is Lucifer? Who the fuck is Armand? Because again, remember, Lucifer was only mentioned, had like four of them in here. Armand has like four different references, and we're we looking at two of them right now. We're on the second one. Armand's got like 12, and we ain't going to do all of them, but we are going to get some of them. I might just lump all that up for you, but Armand is that nigga. Anyways, um, hmm. Oh, you get right find out. Armand's that nigga. So, my bad, my bad, my bad. All right. The devil's assumption of a shining form is probably in part due to the assimilation of the figures of Lucifer and Satan that was already underway. The devil's ability to change form later reinforced the idea derived from the folklore that witches could shift their shapes. I don't see anything else about Lucifer but yeah I guess that's all it was I don't know it said 20 something through 207 mm -hmm. you know so 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 Oh, I see, I see. Right, this was again how they just keep, yeah, it's over again. That was back to another, like I said, my bad, my bad. Yep, sum it all up. Just keep showing you how a lot of this shit gets thrown into the devil. And they take a bunch of different people, different stories, different myths, and throw them all into the devil. So even when you think of one person like Lucifer, or one name like Lucifer, it all goes into the devil. Oh, okay, my bad, I was on the wrong page. 207 to 208. So what we got on 208? Okay, 61. Again, there is evidence of the intrusion of the Lucifer myth in the reference to the stars of heaven. All right. So, reference 67. Where is that at? 60, 61. All right, all right. Okay. Michael rejects the devil's argument. Okay. As in the story of the Watchers, the devil's fall occurs from the after the creation of human beings. The devil's fall occurs after the creation of human beings. Now, the devil, being an angel, stands above Adam in the order of nature and was created before him. Adam is made in the image and likeness of the Lord in a way that the angels are not, and so the angels must worship him. In his pride, the devil refuses. The devil falls in pride and envy, but envy of man, not of God. Michael rejects the devil's arguments, warning him that unless he joins the other angels in worshiping Adam, the Lord will be angry, and Satan said, If he be wroth with me, I will set my seat above the stars of heaven and will be like the highest or the most high. Satan has now translated his envy and hatred of man into envy and hatred of the Lord. The Lord, filled with wrath, but hold on, he can't be an evil nigga if he's, how is he filled with wrath? The Lord, filled with wrath, banishes Satan and his angels, hurling them to the earth, cast down from heaven, the devil envies the joy of Adam and Eve in the garden. And with guile, I cheated thy wife and caused thee to be expelled through her doing. 
from thy joy and luxury as I have been driven out of my glory. This version of the myth presents Satan as one of the greatest and earliest creations of the God, a creature who falls through envy and pride from his high estate, a creature whose love of the God is turned to hatred by the God's preference for his younger offspring. The devil appears less of an evil than as being hurt by and alienated from his parents. Once having rebelled, however, he is thrust by the sheer weight of his power further into enmity against the Lord. The division between the two steadily widened. The devil threatens to raise his power. We can go into all that shit, whatever. We ain't here to learn about the devil. We just want to know how this shit pertains to Lucifer, right? All right, 30 minutes in, and you got that part. So as you can see, Lucifer and the devil... These niggas have two different, totally different myths. It's a totally different thing going on. But Lucifer is associated with pride and a whole lot of it. So, uh, 229, there's not a lot about Lucifer, a whole lot about our minds. So that's the only reason why, again, I'm going through this. And that's another reason why I hope you're prepared because we keep saying that name a whole motherfucking lot. And if you know names carry energy, they carry weight, this, that, and the third, and whatever. So, nigga, I'm good. That nigga can come see me in my dreams if he want to. I'll fuck him up. <laughs> I'm the wrong nigga. But anyways, anyways, so, okay. All right, all right, all right. Boom. So, 229. The names given the devil in the New Testament reflect the double background of Hellenism and apocalyptic Judaism. More, most often he is Satan or the devil, Diablos being a trans- Lation of the Hebrew Satan. He is also Beelzebub, and the enemy, or Bilal, the tempter, the accuser, the empty one. See, he's got so many names, right? The ruler of this world and the prince of demons. The devil's connection with the demons is paralleled by his association with the fallen angels. Revelations 12 and 4, 12, 7, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. Which makes it clear that he is to be regarded as a spiritual being. These conceptions have their roots in both apocalyptic and rabbinical, rabbi, rabbinical Judaism. The Jews, although the fallen angels are likely are likened, although the fallen angels are likened to fallen stars in Revelation chapter twelve verse four, the name Lucifer, light bearer, already attached to the head of the fallen angels in apocalyptic literature is not used in the New Testament where the bearer of light is the new Christ. Now, 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 how did we do that? How did they do that? How did they go there? Where the hell is my book? The Hard Knocks of Grimm's Fairy Tales. It's around here somewhere. I got stacks and stacks and stacks of books. But the hard knocks of Grimm's fairy tales. And also it talks about that in, um, so the mirror world. Like I said, the book of Lilith, I probably should have got. But, um, universe B is mirror to this world. So, everything that happens here, what would be considered positive here, is negative there. What would be considered negative there, is positive here. You know what I'm saying? What would be considered negative here is positive there. And vice versa, you feel me? So, that being said, the good guys, a lot of times, the good guys in the movies are really the bad guys. And the bad guys are really the good guys. And what's one of the things that they love to do is to take the good guy, turn him into a bad guy. Take the bad guy, turn him into a good guy. You see what I'm saying? So, it's like you can't help but rooting for the bad guy, but you know he's a bad guy. But you kind of feel for him. You know what I mean? It's also why, like, uh, I was talking to my partner again. This deals and deals with, like, the Black Adam, which we're going to talk about that shit. Why I'm trying to go ahead and get this shit out. Because there's so many... I, I bounce around so much, you know what I'm saying? I got to do, like, video every fucking day is what I should do. But, again, good guy, bad guy. That's why now they talk about, like, the anti-hero versus the villain. See, bad guys used to be really motherfucking bad guys. They like doing negative shit. They would fuck everybody up. It's just what it is. They love to kill you. They want to see blood. They like that negative shit. But they were truly bad, evil beings. Now they're anti-heroes, you know what I'm saying, versus the ones who want to save everybody. They just want to say they people. They just want to do their thing. Again, self deification, my bad. Self empowerment, self deification, where you turn into a God versus you depend on a God. Left hand path, 
versus the right hand path. You see what I'm saying? The right hand path versus the left hand path. And this is another thing I'm getting ready to get at right now, right? So check this out. So where the bearer of light is the Christ. So now all of a sudden, the light bearer is Jesus. So he now he didn't assumed his title, which is one of the things that we are going to talk about again, Lucifer and Armand, and how this nigga assumes that title. But anyways, 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 all right, so check this out, check this out. The function of the devil in the New Testament, all right? <clears throat> the name Lucifer, the light bearer, is already attached to the head of the fallen angels, it's not, which is already attached, is not used in the New Testament, where the bearer of light is the Christ. The function of the devil in the New Testament is as counter principle to Christ. The central message of the New Testament is salvation. Christ saves us. What he saves us from is the power of the devil. If the power of the devil is dismissed, the Christ saving mission becomes meaningless. The devil occupies a central position in the New Testament as the chief enemy of the Lord. And we can stop right there. We could really stop right there. But hold on, let me see if we can find the seven. Good discussions of this point are in... Okay, they give you the books that you can go to finding all that shit. If you want to know more about that discussion, as far as uh, if the power of the devil is dismissed, then Christ's saving mission becomes meaningless. If there is no evil, then there is no point of good. You cannot have good without knowing what evil is. You wouldn't know a beautiful motherfucker if you hadn't seen an ugly person. You wouldn't know what pretty was until you've seen ugly. You wouldn't know what ugly was until you've seen pretty. You see what I'm saying? That's what you're dealing with here. So it's the it it You can't have one without the other. <laughs> Love and marriage. I don't know why the fuck that just came to mind. It's the drink. Nigga, it's the spirit. But alright, alright. So we're gonna stop there. You can't have one without the other. Which is something that is mentioned in this book that I did highlight. Basically, the right-hand path, those that depend on God and the, 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 basically, basically, the right-hand path, dependency on God, and, and, and you got to answer to Jesus like this motherfucker, what it do, fool, try to do my shit, everybody answers to Jesus Christ or something, whatever, 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 whatever. basically, the right-hand path has to have an enemy. For you to be a hero or a good guy, there has to be evil. It has to be bad out there in the world. There has to be for there to be good. So the right-hand path has to have the left. They need an enemy, which ends up being the left. They blame the left. But it always ends up being the left. Damn near every time. The right-hand path has to have an enemy. The left. The left-hand path has no enemy, nigga. Like Cat Williams said, it's called self-esteem or self-whatever-the-fuck. How the fuck can I... Affect the way you feel about you, simple bitch. Or whatever the fuck he said all that time ago. You know what I'm saying? That's your self-esteem, your self-worth, self-confidence. It's self-deification. You see what I'm saying, nigga? I got my motherfucking feathers flowing. I got my motherfucking whiskers growing, bitch. My motherfucking guru, OZ the wizard. self deification I know I'm a god. I walk, talk, and act like one. Bitch, I'm straight. So again, left hand path, I don't need nothing. If I attract negative energy, I attracted that negative pole or that whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I know when I swing towards the good, I know bad is coming. When I'm swinging towards the bad, I know good is coming. You see what I'm saying? Try to walk the middle path or you just try to... When shit's going too good, you try to push the pole as good... Hold it as good as much as you can and whatever else because you know when it swings back the other way Like the little the pendulum effect, you know, what I mean or whatever they call that little shit with the balls When you pull one ball as far as you pull this way when it comes back and smacks the middle This other ball is going to go that far. So if you can imagine just holding it there Instead of bringing it further because you know if you pull it further when you when it's all uh, when the shit comes central you're going to get that much more negative. You want this much more good instead of just taking it for what it's worth. If you try to squeeze more out of it, 
when it comes on the back end, you're going to get more bullshit out of it too. More money, more problems. You know what I'm saying? But if you can just hold it, get it back to the other side, it's like the game. We're just trying to stay neutral. Anyways, anyways, that's the game though. That's You get the concept. Rock with the concept. So, let's get to, we're 40 minutes in, and we didn't strain the black, explain, we, we went through the backdrop. Uh, the, the Lucifer shit. We'll get to the Aramon shit. I can sum the Aramon shit up for you right now. All that shit about Satan, the devil, um, Karen, Karn, Sharn, Sharun, Karun, Karun, however you want to pronounce that shit. But all of that shit about the devil, this, that, and the third, and whatever else, um, it originally started with Aramon. So let's go to this one book. If you ain't got that book, you can get this one book. Check it out. Human beings are dwellers in two worlds. This is the introduction. We might get through some of uh, chapter, I mean the first lecture. Because this, uh, this book is a compilation of lectures. There's five lectures. An introduction and five lectures by Rudolf Steiner. In these lectures, Rudolf Steiner focuses on the vital task of developing the proper orientation towards a free spiritual life. With great compassion and understanding, he offers telling examples of how humanity must walk a conscious middle way between two tempting powers of Lucifer and Aramon. He describes an, the, the or an incarnation of Lucifer in the third millennium before the Christ event, out of which flowed not just the wisdom of paganism, but also the conscious intellect we enjoy today. Our mind, on the other hand, is shown approaching human beings through such phenomenon as materialism, nationalism, and literalism, all in preparation for his incarnation in the millennium now opening. Boom. Keep in mind, however, that these two powers do not work separately, rather they are working increasingly together. Our task as human beings is to hold them in balance, continually permeating one with the other. Steiner tells us that Lucifer and Armand must be regarded as two scales of a balance. Lucifer and Armand, two scales. And the motherfucker holding the scales, or just that, that pivot point, it is we who must hold the beam in equipoise. Keep that shit balanced. How can we train ourselves to do this? By permeating what takes our mind form, our harmonic form within us with the strongly luciferic element. To accomplish this task, we need a new, more conscious inner life. So, it's back to the knowing and it's back to the balancing and whatnot. One of the things that kind of struck me as my intellectual ass um, came into it was, you know, protons, electrons, and neutrons. All of them play a part in the atom. And all of them have a significant thing. So it was like, first came the protron, which is Lucifer. The extremely positive nigga. You know what I'm saying? Extremely positive nigga. He's not neutral at all. Not neutral at all. And you see, he would not back down. Again, the light bearer, the protron. I'm not back. It's no backing down. It's not happening. None whatsoever. But the light bearer. Um, Lucifer is also translated to phosphoros in Greek. And phosphoros, phosphorus, is a light emitting element when set on fire. It emits light. It's easily to catch fire or something like that. But I'm just saying. Light from phosphorus. It happens. So phosphorus, Lucifer, it all, all that shit has a meaning. Light bearer. All comes back to light and heat. But anyways, point being, Lucifer is extremely positive. He is an angel, nonetheless, a motherfucking angel, and it was pride, but it was an angel that wouldn't back down. He was first angel, wouldn't back down. So first they say came Lucifer, and even if you take in the story, like with the Watchers, this, that, and the third, and whatever else, there was Lucifer, right? Hold on. Give me a quick break. Uh, it's not going to be a break to you. I'm going to pause this. I got to grab some water real quick. Give me a second. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, nigga. So that was a whole lot of talking. That was a whole lot of cotton mouth. And we still got more to go. So, um, yeah, I had to give me a quick reset. Sorry about that. Might have been a little unprofessional, but I don't give a fuck. It's my channel. Sorry about that. But anyways, I do want to bring up a little bit of the Aramonic shit. Um, this is kind of give you a little backdrop on Aramon as well. Because, again, this nigga, when we get into these lectures, again, thin book, it's just going to flow. It's not going to give you much 
of this or that. It just says R minor. You kind of are expected to know. So again, going back to the index. I'm sorry, man. We got to go back into this motherfucking book. Might have to just do a part two. But going back into the index. Yeah, we can just call this the introduction and we'll do a part two for the, uh, what's it called? But anyways, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Who gives a fuck? So on the index, right, Armand is in this motherfucker a bunch of times. Let's go to, I believe it was 248. One of the references is page 248, you'll find Armand. Now, I like going to the back of the book because, again, a lot of this shit is just, you know, in the front of the book is just some other shit. But we're going to see if we find our mind. Right. The dualism of the New Testament. Oh. Maybe I should just read this whole motherfucking paragraph. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil in the New Testament. The New Testament, and again, I'm going to try to read this fast, so stay with me. The New Testament does not move the tradition of the concept of the devil strikingly beyond the position of the late Jewish apocalyptic. The two literatures are almost contemporary and arise from the same Hellenistic Jewish. But it does fix many of the elements of Hellenistic Jewish tradition firmly in the concept. The devil is a creature of God, the chief of the fallen angels, but he is most of the time acts as if he had far greater power. He is the Lord of this world, chief of a vast multitude of powers, spiritual and physical, angelic and human, that are arrayed against the kingdom of God. Satan is not only the Lord's chief opponent, he has under his generalship all opposition, every fucking thing, all opposition to the Lord. Anyone who does not follow the Lord is under the control of Satan. Christianity, like apocalyptic Judaism, refused to embrace dualism, but Satan's power attributes and ultimate fate are, ult are very similar to those of Armand in Mazdaism. Okay? Christianity, this is modern Christianity, like apocalyptic Judaism, refused to embrace dualism. God did all of this shit, the good and the bad. They refused to do that. No, there has to only be one good and the rest is all bad, and the rest of the shit that's bad is that nigga, and the good is this nigga, right? So, Christianity, alright? Mm -hmm. Satan's power, his power, attributes, and ultimate fate are very similar to those of Armand in Mazdaism. As Satan is the opponent of the good Lord of Judaism, so he is the opponent of Christ, the Son of the Lord. As Christ commands the armies of light, Satan commands those of darkness. The cosmos is torn between light and darkness, good and evil, spirit and matter, soul and body, the new eon and the old, the Lord and Satan. The Lord is creator of all things and the guarantor, the whatever the fuck that is, the creator of their goodness, but Satan and his kingdom have corrupted this world. Christ comes to destroy this old world, this evil eon, and to establish a new one in its place. In the end, Satan and his powers will be defeated, cast down, and perhaps annihilated. Christ's other world, the kingdom of goodness, of light, of spirit, will be forever established. The dualism of this view is mitigated in at least three important ways. The good God created the world, which, though corrupted by Satan, remains intrinsically good, Satan himself is a creature of God. The meaning of the created world is itself ambiguous. It is not clear whether the struggle between the two kingdoms is on a truly cosmic level or whether it occurs in human society alone. Meaning the other animals have nothing to do with this shit. Only humans are going through this shit. Anyway, at the end of time, Christ will win the final victory over Satan. The dualism of the New Testament is thus not the extreme dualism of Gnosticism, yet it is even farther from monism. monism. The New Testament Christianity is best perceived as a semi-dualist religion in which both the unity and goodness of the Lord are preserved, however precariously, while Satan is given almost a vast scope and power as Aramon. Wide powers were assigned to Satan for two reasons. The first is simply that the traditions of Mazdaism, Orphism, 
Hellenistic religion and philosophy and late Judaism were passed on to the New Testament Christianity. Again, this is like that council in Nicaea or whatever the fuck them niggas be talking about. Again, I've been smoking, I've been drinking, I don't know. I'm trying to go into all them details and whatnot right now. But a lot of you niggas know what I'm talking about. That council, that the motherfuckers that got together and wrote the Bible. So, there you go. Um, <clears throat> and second, these traditions were eagerly accepted and reinforced because they allowed a partial answer to the question of theodicy. To the corruption of the cosmos by Satan can be assigned natural ills such as death and disease and storm, whether they are simply set sent upon us as diabolical afflictions or are meant as punishments for our sin. Moral evil might exist in mankind without Satan, but he constantly abets it through temptation and all those who sin are automatically under his power. Every day, in every place, in every life, Satan and his powers are working to block the kingdom of God. The devil is the source of lies, of murder, of wars. He tempts us, accuses us, punishes us, all that good shit. Right, right, right. But somewhere, the world is full of terrible grief, suffering, and pain. But somewhere beyond the power of Satan is a greater power that gives meaning to that pain. All right. So, we read all that to say again. The whole point of all of that shit is they straight up told you all of that shit is Aramon, not Lucifer. Aramon, totally different nigga with a totally different mythology from a totally different time, totally different, older, totally different, but Aramon. So you got Lucifer and you got Aramon, but still, it's that concept. You see what I'm saying? First, there was a great good. Which even, like they said, the Titans in Greece and whatever else. That was the Prometheus, I want to say, ass nigga. Um, there's a lot of motherfuckers that stole fire and gave certain attributes and tried to, you know what I'm saying? There's a couple stories. I want to say like Tart. Tar ah. There's a couple of them. Tantalus or something like that. There's a couple of them. There's a couple of them. Sisyphus, some shit. They cheated death. But there's a couple of shit that, you know, stole this or that and whatever. They fucked up, tipped it with the gods. A couple different stories. But the point is like the, the Prometheus shit. And the Titans and whatnot. The information, but there's a, a super good nigga that's gonna that that came down first and gave everybody all the information and whatever. As a matter of fact, let's read from this book. We are, we damn near an hour in. Let's just read from this book and see what Rudolf, Rudolf Steiner has to say about it. But that was it. All that negative shit. That's that RMI shit. All that Satanist, the the the, the truly evil shit is RMI shit. The Lord of Lies, this or that, Beelzebub. That's Aramon shit, not Lucifer shit. It's Aramon shit. And it makes a very, very, very potent point. Thank you for staying this long. That is very potent. Right there. That is Aramon. So Lucifer. All right. All right. Check this out. <clears throat> Here we go. We already talked about Lucifer. Here we go. Our uniqueness among the creatures, human beings. Introduction. Introduction. Let's go. Page one. Human beings are dwellers in two worlds. Our uniqueness among the creatures of the earth lies in this role that we have as half beasts and half angel. Whenever we are called upon to make a choice, a decision, the earthly and the heavenly draw us one way or the other, and often both at once. A long-held view has been that, of course, one should always give way to the heavenly or spiritual. The alternative is to succumb to the earthly, to the fallen, to the evil. The struggle has often been portrayed as white versus black, good versus evil. The accumulation of an inordinate amount of material, an inordinate amount of the material realm in the form of wealth has also been rather suspect. So, the name Lucifer comes from the Latin meaning bearer of light. One's childhood picture, childhood, thinking like a kid, grow the fuck up. One's childhood picture of Lucifer as a slithering manifestation of, manifestation of evil is difficult to reconcile with the beauty of this name. Lucifer, however, represents a force that paradoxically can combine beauty and, if you will, beauty gone too far to the extreme of decadence, hence to evil. And I would pull out my phone and be like, Google, define decadence, whatever the fuck, figure it out. I know y'all can do that. All right. 
In the Greek legend, Icarus and his father Daedalus escape from the tower of their island prison with wings fashioned from wax. Despite his father's warning, Icarus becomes enamored of his newfound power and the beauty of the sun. He flies up to the light and heat, and his wings melt, and he falls to his death. The wiser and more restrained Daedalus keeps his flight balanced between heaven and earth, thus succeeding in his escape from bondage. The Greeks were very aware of the temptation of Lucifer in most of their tragedies and in most of their tales of tragedy. Hubris, or overweening pride, was the source of a hero's downfall. Hubris, or overweening pride, was the source of a hero's downfall. All right. Lucifer, in Rudolf Steiner's, whatever, you know, uh, script, sculpture, in Lu Rudolf Steiner's mind, we'll just use that word instead of sculpture. And that's something you should do when you read a whole lot, too. It's just one of the things. If you can't really understand the word or you don't really feel its context or, like, how I'm talking to this motherfucking video, if I don't feel like me saying his sculptures, you know, word built for niggas, just put whatever word you want there that really kind of works. It helps you just to keep making it flow through your mind, right? Just a little tip and trick. So, anyways, in Rudolf Steiner's mind frame, um, the representative of Lucifer is portrayed as an exceedingly handsome and powerful winged form. Despite having fallen from heaven, he was nevertheless an angel, a leader of angel. As the light bearer, he has a particular gifts for humankind, especially that of wisdom, the gift he first offered to Adam and Eve by their eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Lucifer promised that they would be as gods. Like Icarus, they were not yet prepared for such a gift, and ignoring warnings to the contrary, they accepted it and fell from paradise. In this example, it should be noted that the gift in and of itself is not evil. Nobody said the tree was fucking evil. The gift in and of itself is not evil. You see what I'm saying? Being able to eat is not evil. Now, if you're going to eat pork versus eating ham, uh, uh, what the fuck I was getting ready to say. If you're going to eat, I meant to say like a ham sandwich versus a turkey sandwich. But in my mind, I was thinking ham and turkey, but pork, you know what I mean? So, But you get the point. If you want a ham sandwich versus a turkey sandwich, the fact that you're eating is not evil in and of itself. The fact that you know how to make a sandwich or, you know, there are sandwiches that could be made is not evil. Some niggas, that's the only thing available, so they eat sandwiches. You see what I'm saying? That organic or holistic shit, the kosher food, ain't available every fucking way. So you do what you gotta do. But anyways, I'm you, just saying. It should be noted that the gift in and of itself is not evil. As in our earlier psychological examples, neither the heavenly nor the earthly is of itself to be seen as either absolutely desirable or absolutely forbidden. The beings of the polarities, desirable, forbidden, actually have something of value to offer humanity that is different, very different from the traditional view of the devil's offering. However, an individual must be inwardly prepared for the reception of these gifts if they are to be of any value. The hallucinogenic drug user is open to receiving luciferic light and often feels quite wise when in the midst of a drug experience. Without the meditative discipline of the serious student of the spirit, however, the contact with those realms is rarely beneficial and, in fact, can be quite harmful. They call them trips, and you can go on a bad trip. It's just that simple. You can hallucinate and wig out all of that shit. But if you don't know what you're doing, they show you that shit all the time with, what is it called, like the ayahuasca trips and whatever else. And these motherfuckers go absolutely nuts talking to trees and this and whatever. You be seeing white people, oh, oh, make it stop, make it stop, make it stop, oh, 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 oh. They talk about motherfuckers take off naked running down the street, this, that, and the third. A bad acid trip. Or whatever else, motherfuckers don't know what's going on. You ain't got that meditative spirit in you, and whatever else, nigga, you gonna it, it's gonna suck for you. But that's the point. That's the point, right? This is what we're talking about. That's the luciferic light, okay? <clears throat> Whereas, okay, do 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 do. 
In this century, society has especially interested itself in the material, partially in response to the excessive rejection of the earth and the body and of the authoritarianism which maintained this position. We have now fully entered the realm of, the mat of matter with head, heart, and soul. Whereas in former times, humor, humankind was more dreamy in its consciousness and dreamy, the dream state. That was like the aboriginal uh, Australians, some of them niggas whose cultures and shit they can predate, or I don't want to say predate, but go as far back as the Egyptians and whatever else, but the dream mind, the dream world and all of that shit, right? Anyways, 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 it just, that's one of them things, right? Whereas in former times, human time, humankind was more dreamy in its consciousness and thus more prone to, lo to the luciferic realm of fantasy, illusion, and superstitious thinking. That is also the age of Pisces. Now we're in the age... This is what, every two, three years? So we're talking about a millennium, millennium. Anyways, now we're in the age of Aquarius. So age of Pisces, luciferic shit. Illusions, fantasy, superstitious thinking, modern consciousness tends to the concrete, to materialism. The belief only in what can be ascertained, what can be gathered by the physical senses binds us to the earth and to the influence of the being named Araman. Angramainu, or Araman, Aingramainu, Angramainu, Aingramainu, or Araman, was first spoken of in the Zoroastrianism of ancient Persia. Totally different place, totally different tradition, totally different mythology that niggas know nothing about. And that's why it's the dopest shit. Because niggas, you know what I'm saying? Most people don't know nothing about it. Anyways, he was the evil god, the lord of lies, who tempted men and women to believe that they were solely earthly beings. At a time in history when the clairvoyance, which has once been common, was becoming rare, the ethical teachings of Zarathustra sought to remind people of their divine origin and to teach through the revelation he had received of the Lord of the Sun, Ahura Mazda. How many of you niggas drive a Mazda? See, they know what the fuck they be doing. They know what the fuck they be doing. Ahura Mazda. The influence of Araman has grown through the centuries, quietly gaining respectability in the age of the Renaissance and flourishing in our own century as the predominant worldview. Only in the last years has there been any serious questioning of the notion that the only reality is the physical one. For the most part of the realm of the soul and spirit has been dismissed. The prevailing scientific view has been that only what can be weighed, measured, or quantified should merit serious attention. This is Araman. The world because Okay, okay, this, yeah, so check this out. <clears throat> At the beginning of the century, Russian philosopher Vladimir Soloviev warned of this danger. The world becomes peaceful, even docile, for the minor sacrifice of individuality and freedom. The influence of Araman is seen in the generous gifts that he has bestowed on humankind in the past centuries and for which we must feel very grateful. All of the technological marvels which science has made possible have given many of us relative freedom from all manner of drudgery while maintaining a high standard of living freeing us to pursue other interests, giving us more time. Or do we really have time? The great difficulty with our acceptance of Araman's bounty has been our relative blindness and lack of foresight as we have lost ourselves in its enjoyment. The birth of the ecology movement and the discussion of the reductionist nature of science has wakened some consciousness of the danger into which we have strayed. Some awareness has risen to, as to what we are sacrificing in the bargain which society has struck, a sacrifice which involves our very humanity. All right? 
Through Darwin's theory of evolution, as well as through Freud's positing of the sexual as the primary motive of humankind, the idea that we are no more than naked apes has become quite accepted. To this instinctual or animalistic picture of the human, science has added the model of the human being as a machine with the brain as a computer. Hmm. With such a confining definition of humanity, is it any wonder that we have increasingly come to act and see ourselves as just machines or just animals? The challenge for the individual is often not how to face either Armand or Lucifer, but how not to be torn asunder in the encounter with both forces. The Armonic enticements of pleasures of the senses, good fellowship, and temporal power for himself and for his church. Oh, I'm sorry. I went too far. All right. In T.S. Eliot's play, in, this is the end of this chapter. We're going to finish this up. It's the end of the introduction that we've done here. All right. The challenge for the individual is often not how to face either Armand or Lucifer, but how not to be torn asunder in the encounter with both forces. In T.S. Eliot's play, Murder in the Cathedral, the Archbishop of Canterbury is conducted to an examination of himself and his past by a succession of four tempters. The first three tempters attempt to win him with the aromonic enticements of pleasure of the senses, good fellowship, and temporal power for himself and for his church. The Archbishop turns away from these three only to be approached by a fourth, clad like himself as a preacher, as a priest, I'm sorry, looking just like him as a priest with all the right shit. The Luciferic temptation, which is why I should have pulled out the book of Lilith, but I ain't going to go there right now, looked just like a preacher. He did all that shit to look just like the uh, Archbishop. So the Archbishop turns away from these three only to be approached by a fourth, who looks just like him as a priest and tonsured. The Luciferic temptation now offered is the most dangerous and difficult for the Archbishop, the whisper of spiritual pride, to die in order to attain immortality on earth, to envision the saint's tomb being visited by pilgrims for centuries, to stand high within the ranks of heaven. Only with difficulty does the Archbishop turn away from these higher vices? See what I'm saying? There are spiritual pursuits, and Lucifer will try to pull you into all that spiritual shit like it's the right thing to do. And oh, but this will make you a god, and this will make you this, and this will make you that. And but you can visit other planets, nigga, and you can get off Earth, and you can be a motherfucker. You can astral travel, and you can do this and that. Versus this nigga is like, but you could be a millionaire. And you could have a Tesla, nigga. You could be eating all the finest foods and drinking all the finest wines. You know what I'm saying? They both work together, so to speak. They're not working against each other. They're trying to get you to do the same shit. Be a nigga of this trick. Be a nigga of that. Be a nigga of this discipline. Be a nigga of these values. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> In Rudolf Steiner's sculpture, Mind Frame, a strong figure stands one clenched hand upraised to the beautiful Lucifer, the other hand stretched downward to the twisted Aramon. The representative of humanity stands heroically, holding at bay and in balance the two opposing forces centered within the third force, that force which we recognize in ourselves in the word I. I am a god. I am a devil. I am this. I am that. It is the I that determines everything else. Or you. But it's the I. What you think you are. Alright? In this series of lectures, Rudolf Steiner strives to deepen our, under, deepen our understanding of the two opposing forces to alert us especially to the dangers of our mind, whose wiles have lulled us into a support, soporific state. S-O-P-O-R-I-F-I-C, soporific state. The intent, however, is not to drive us to accession over Luciferic or Aramonic demons, 
but rather to remind us, to reawaken us to our true center. In the words of Henry David Thoreau, we must learn to reawaken and keep ourselves awake, not by mechanical means, but by an infinite expectation of the dawn, which does not forsake us even in our soundest sleep. We recognize that the dawn and the figure of the rising Christ who stands for us all in the modern struggle of, for the kernel of our being. We recognize that dawn, we recognize that dawn, the spoken dawn, we recognize that dawn in the figure of the risen Christ who stands for all of us in the modern struggle for the kernel of our being. Huh. So, by, by an infinite expectation of the dawn, and by dawn we mean the figure of the risen Christ who stands for all of us in the modern struggle for the kernel of our being. I had to make that make sense for myself. So, at the end of it, there we go. We must learn to reawaken and keep ourselves awake, not by mechanical means, but by an infinite expectation of the dawn. And by dawn, we mean a figure or concept of the risen Christ who stands for us all in the modern struggle for the kernel of our being, for the soul of our being. All right? Boom. So, there we go. That's what's up, man. The influences of Lucifer and Armand. That was the introduction. We had to touch on who Armand was, what Armand was. We had to get more of an understanding of Lucifer as the bearer of light and whatnot so we could really understand what the fuck was going on. And to sum it all up, now that we're here, you know, yeah, Lucifer is like the head of angels. He's the king shit of angels. He's that number one nigga. And dude is going to go more into depth when we get into lecture one of how and why Lucifer like Lucifer came first, then came Christ, and now we're getting ready to go into Aramon. So with all this AI shit and this and that and whatever else, you can straight up say it's this this is like like dude was saying in the early eighteen hundreds, in the early nineteen hundreds, preparing for the birth of Aramon. And if we're talking about a spirit or a concept and whatever else, like how we were saying the motherfucker has no form where I went through all that shit about Lucifer, Satan and whatever else. It has no form, no body, no this and whatever else. They literally get ready to give this nigga a body. And they're going to call it AI and whatever else and say, yeah, it can think for itself, it's whatever else. But nigga, that's Aramon. And you better get with it. They make all kind of movies. You better get with it. And you understand, is it this or is it that? Like they made this one movie. Um, there's a thing on, ooh, this is a good bonus for those who stayed this long. I want to say it's on Amazon Prime or something like that. Maybe it's on Amazon Prime or something like that, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I do know that, like I said, it, it, it's, it's, I can't think of the name of it. Um, like Miss Something. But there's a nun or whatever. But there's some type of AI program that wants this nun, talk to, get, keep trying to get to this nun, but the nun is trying to shut it down. Um, it's got a name or something like that. But the nun it, 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 that AI program, it's in everybody's phone, and it's on this and that and whatever else, and everybody keeps trying to give this phone, give this phone to the nun, and like, hey, man, it wants to talk to you, um, there's a call for you, and she's like, is it, is it the AI, man, I can't think of the name, if I can remember that shit, I'll give it to y'all, man, but that's the same type of shit, like, they even telling you straight up what's coming, you know what I mean, even like the Terminator and this and whatever else, who's gonna be able to resist our mind, even again, like the iRobot shit, that's what the fuck that was, and that's what dude was even showing you, like iRobot, at the end of iRobot, when he stood up and there was all them robots, and then whatever the fuck else, it's like, nigga, next is Armand, so we're gonna get into it, we're gonna get into it, if you can fuck with it, leave me a comment, um, if you understand what's going on, as far as what I'm trying to convey to you, then holler at me, uh, we'll be back here in a minute, um, let me get myself together, hell, I might get prepared and just go ahead and run another video out, but, um, it, it takes a while to even get started, and then to do it for an hour and some change takes even more time. So, you know what I mean? I get prepped and all this whole shit. So, we'll we'll see how soon we can come back with it. But we are getting ready to come back with it straight up. Um, influences of Lucifer and Armand. Introduction. All right. Holla at your boy, man. I'm with it.